the biggest challenge is honestly is is uh is staying hungry because you can get like complacent right like you gotta think like you know I'm from the, I'm from the neighborhood like I ain't, I've never I didn't know people coming up who made the type of money that were able to make in this space so at times you can get comfortable it's normal. Right, it's normal to just say, "Okay, I'm I'm chilling at this time. I feel like I'm good. I don't got to keep grinding." But then there's other times where I'm like, "Nah, that's why I stay around people who's kind of in a better position than me or my circle where everyone's like, "Yo, you gotta get some more money, or we gotta keep leveling up." Because if you don't have that, it's easy to get complacent. So I would just say finding a way to just always stay hungry. Yo, what's pop? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. Oh man, it's one of them ones, man. I told y'all. I keep, I keep, I keep attracting like entrepreneurs, man. I'm feeling the vibes, man. Uh, this guy to my left right here, uh, originally from Boston, Massachusetts. This guy has been hustling for I want to say quite a while now. I mean, he 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 jumped into the uh the credit space. He helping people make money. Uh, then he started doing digital products. I mean, this guy right here. And one thing I like about this guy is I watched his um, Million Dollar River Game Entrepreneur Spotlight, and he was just spitting. <laughs> so, like, he know what he's talking about. We might have a different conversation today. All Mr. Right. Darius Benders is in the building. What up, dog? Not much, man. How I appreciate you, feeling, you dog? having me, bro. I'm yeah. good, man. Blessed can't complain another day. I'm going to uh, turn these lights on. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my bad. No, you good, bro. I always forget these damn lights for some He's reason. Fire though. No, nah, I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, man. So like, uh, that's how long you been doing this actually? Like this, this whole entrepreneur space. Like, how long you been in it? So I've been an entrepreneur, bro. Now for uh, since I was like twenty two, I graduated school. I worked jobs for like that first year after school. Um, it really wasn't for me. So yeah, I got an entrepreneurship right away. Where? Um, but the online space, um, doing funding and credit, it's been about. Two two and a half years since I've been in an online space in total. The education part has been two years just officially. Okay, so wait, so so basically, kind of maybe around COVID time. Yeah, right. At, yeah, exactly. So COVID was like a pivotal time because that's when basically I was doing nightlife before, and right. I know if nightlife shut down because COVID. Mm -hmm. So I was like not getting no money. There was nothing coming in, and I, I really had to figure something out. And then that's when I learned about this. So it was literally COVID time. Wow. Yeah. So wait, how how, how has the business been since then? Because COVID, like everything kind of like slowed Shit. up. Facts. So a lot of people say the entrepreneurs who was online during COVID, a lot of them ain't making it. Well, I had just started. So it's been it's been a blessing, bro. I can't even lie. Um, transitioning to the online space was different. Because, mm -hmm. you know, in nightlife, business is all at the core the same. Like it's product, person, marketing but the online space i find it dope because you can reach people that from all over the world like i ain't got to live near you i don't even got to know you um versus the nightlife it's more hands-on so i felt like honestly the nightlife was more like grit like getting it out the mud like i gotta meet people i gotta network i gotta build relationships right. um versus the online space bro if you get good at marketing uh, you have a product or service that you do like we help people get money who don't like the person no, who can facts. help them yeah. get money so um yeah it's been it's been good bro what's been the um i guess the uh the, the, the biggest challenge so far now that COVID is over and people aren't getting as much money as they used to be getting? Well, for us, that's not really a challenge because we help people get access to the money. So I came in after people was getting all them, uh, was it PPPs yeah. and all those stuff. So I wasn't in the online space yet at that time. Um, after is when we started. But like the banks, bro, they're giving out money. It don't matter if what's going on because the way the banks make money is off collecting interest. So they're counting on people not being able to pay them back or they're going to, you know, add that 15 to 20% that they charge them when they give you these products. Okay. So I guess, not, and not not even about COVID, then I guess what's the biggest challenge about just being in, in this, this space in general then? Um, that's a good question. The biggest challenge, the biggest challenge is honestly, is, is, uh, is staying hungry because you can get like complacent, right? Like you got to think like, you no, know, I'm from, the, I'm from the neighborhood. Like I ain't, I've never, I didn't know people coming up who made the type of money that were able to make in this space. So at times you could get comfortable. It's normal, right? It's normal to just say, okay, I'm I'm chilling at this time. I feel like I'm good. I don't got to keep grinding. But then there's other times where I'm like, nah, that's why I stay around people who's kind of in a better position than me or my circle where everyone's like, yo, you got to get some more money or we got to keep leveling up. Because if you don't have that, it's easy to get complacent. So I would just say finding a way to just always stay hungry. I, I ask that because like, it's like 
everybody's doing credit, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know, like, it seemed like everybody's doing credit, but everybody's credit ain't good as well. So I know yeah. there's plenty of clients out there, but I just feel like people who don't have that as a priority as yep. much, I don't know. Now, you're not lying. It's So people talk about saturation. I don't believe that things can be oversaturated if you apply enough pressure. So, like, there's always going to be, in any field, like, podcasting, everybody doing it now. Yeah, everyone's going to put in the work Jay Hill going to put in. Yeah. Everyone's going to shoot X amount of episodes a day. Yeah. And everyone's not the person, right? So, with credit, it's the same way. There's a million people, because I coach a lot of people on how to grow their businesses, but I understand the mindset, like... We think we in the business of what we do. You're not in the bit. You not where you are because of podcasting. You're who you're where you are because of who you had to become. Mm. Podcasting is just the thing you do. For me, I always been like a like a workhorse. Like before this, everything I did, former division one walk on turn starter. So my mindset coming into this was I already know I'm outwork eighty percent of the people who's in the field. So when I got in the field, that's why we were able to kind of grow so fast. So for me, it's simple marketing. Uh, my product, making sure my product is good and actually delivers results because that make it easier. And then um, just continuing to get better. That's the three-step process there. Mm. Yo, so when you talk about getting complacent, right? Mm -hmm. At what point of time is enough enough though? Or is 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 that even, does that even exist? Hmm, that's a good question. I think, um, I ask myself that sometimes. And I think that like, People, people ask all the time, like, you know, when are you going to, like, stop or when do you feel like enough is enough? For me, I think it's just depending on the person, depending on what you want. I know that, like, the things we want, I want out of life. The reason I got into this is because I've seen that people were able to not be capped. So for me, there's a lot of things I want to do. I feel like I haven't even touched the surface of the things I'm trying to do. So for me, I'm not near the point where I'm like, oh, enough is enough, mm. right? So it's just it's just about what the individual wants. Mm. Yo, how... How long do you see yourself doing this, bro? Because I know, like, this, I was just just doing some research and just looking, and it wasn't really about the research. It really was just like the 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 thought process to put my mind in. Because I've been doing a, I've been interviewing a lot of entrepreneurs, but I I was thinking like, how can I make this different? Mm -hmm. And one thing I never asked yet was, like, you know, a, a job is it, it gives you security, right? So like, you can have retirement. You get those checks when you retire. Entrepreneurship is like, it seems like when you're done, you, when you stop, it all stops. Stop. So like. What's the not backup plan, but like, do you ever fear that, like, bro, like, like how long I'm gonna be doing this? You know what I'm saying? How, how can this put me, make me good for life? You know what I'm trying now, to that's say? a great question. So, I feel like the point, like, I'm coming into a point now, like, I'm just joining a real estate program now because making money's first, right? Mm -hmm. When we in the struggle, we just want to figure out how the hell I make some bread. Mm -hmm. Second thing is like, okay, I learned how to make bread, but how do I make the bread and keep the bread? Mm -hmm. And now I'm at a point where now I want to learn how to make my money make money for me, right? Because the reason jobs we say are secure is because you can take your check and you can put it into something that's going to continue to grow for you or mm -hmm. you have what you think is good after retirement, right? A couple thousand a month. But entrepreneurship is the same thing. If you're making a lot, we, we, we're a heavy cash flow business. So I, I start taking this money and putting it into cribs. Let's say I get, I don't know, five, 10 cribs that even cash flow, you know, 1500 a month. Now we start getting to 15, $20,000 in cash flow. Then we talk about the equity, right? Mm. So that's kind of my plan. That's a good question. Um, I just locked in because now I'm starting to think about that. Like working hard is cool, but we don't want to work hard forever. Yeah. That's the point of this to get in and learn how to be able to create enough cash flow that you can put into things that, that'll grow. I'm sorry, bro. No, you good. Yo, okay. Another question I was curious about. When it comes to this entrepreneur stuff, right? It's like, I feel like in this space, we can only do but so much. And I feel like with the consumers, and I asked this a couple times, the expectation is like, I don't want to say high far as you, but it's like so high for the person that's helping them, but it's so low on the work that they got to put out for themselves, if that makes sense. Say it one more time. So like, it's well. That expectation of what you can do for them is high, Yes, but... What they gotta do is low. Yes, you get what I'm trying to say. Yes, and it's like, bro, yeah. like, and then when that comes, if you don't help me the way that I think you should help me now, scammer words. Yeah, it's facts. everywhere. Everybody a scammer. Absolutely. And especially coming from Boston, I just I I've never been like that, but I'm only assuming because I'm from Baltimore. Yeah. It's similar. So it's like, like North, yeah, yeah, similar. yeah. So it's like, man, I I believe everybody's scamming anyway. Facts. So when somebody <laughs> now when somebody's spilling that. It's like, man, that, that got to mess up the business 100%. sometimes. Like, how did, how, did, how did that work when you feel? Now, that's good, bro. Uh, the key for us is transparency. The, the difference is a lot of people in my space, 
they over promise and under deliver. Mm. I took the opposite approach because I seen earlier. That's why I don't focus on like credit repair because credit repair is unpredictable, right? You mm. can you can get people results, but what people will do is they'll say, yeah, thirty days to sixty days. That's don't don't capture them people. Tell them people. A, an average time frame might be somewhere between three and nine months. It can be done sooner, but it can take a little longer. That's mm-hmm. a, Those are two totally different statements. So when you do that, you know how we operate, right? Our people, oh, you said three months, bro. We we Oh, you said 30 days. We have 45 days. What's going on? Mm-hmm. So what I do is, bro, we're super transparent. My whole team, anyone who signs up for any of our programs, they get a one-on-one call from one of our um, VAs, right? And they, and they break down everything. They go over what's in the program, what's entitled, and what they signed up for. That for therefore, there's no gray area at all. Um, that's one thing we do. And then in terms of, like, where we're from, um, I felt like, transparently, my city was kind of last to start rocking, right? And the reason is, like you said, when we up north, we got the mindset already, Um, mm, yeah. that sounds too good to be true. Yeah. But if you put out a good product and you start getting people so many results, people can't deny it. So now we got more people in my program from like my city than we ever had before. Because wow. at the end of the day, if someone keeps showing real like testimonials, you can't keep saying, you know, it sounds like it's a finesse or whatever. Yo, how many people you got in your program? Um, currently, in the last twelve months, we've coached over eleven hundred. I think at the moment we're at like uh two hundred and around twenty. Two hundred twenty. Yep. Like, what's the average price point? Um, uh, so our average price point, we have programs that range from uh fifteen hundred dollars all the way up to thirty thousand. Our average, our our core offer is probably our five k offer. When that's where um we have two of those. One where they're gonna learn how to get funding, grow their business, and then uh, run a funding company so they could do what we do as a service. So on average, you got 200 people paying you $5,000 a month? No, 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 not a month. No, okay. no, one time, one time payment. Oh, no, it's okay. not a, it's not a reoccurring. We do have a low ticket reoccurring, forty nine dollars a month for people who want to start there and then they could grow. How many people you got doing that? In our reoccurring, we got about two hundred members in our reoccurring. Damn, mm-hmm. that's crazy, bro. Yeah. How do you like two hundred people? I know you gotta like your mindset is to keep this thing and keep getting more, Absolutely. right? Like, what, what, what? As a business owner, I'm not even talking about the crit. I'm just talking like just man to man. Yeah. As a business owner. What are some of the things that you're working on to, to keep it at that number or have more people come in? So or have a, the people that's there stay for longer? Stay, right? Well, the goal is for the 49 people to ascend to the higher higher price point. The reason I started the community was I realized that when we just had a 5K offer, what I was doing was, because originally I started with just low tickets. So I used to sell just low ticket items because I was thinking like where I'm from. Man, I know I can help everybody get it for a little bit. I can help everybody, then they'll grow, which is cool. But then when I started going to higher ticket, 5000 I realized that the people I'm dealing with, they're paying more attention because they're paying more. Mm-hmm. They're taking it a little more serious in the executing, right? You could drive more transformation because what, what happened if you pay some, if you pay me like, $50, you might be like, all right, if it worked, whatever. Yeah. But if you pay me 5K, you're like, nah, I got to get my bread back. Yeah, it got to work. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the mindset difference. So we started going to that. But what I realized was I was leaving a lot of money on the table by not having something where people could still meet me where they're at and then grow with me. So mm-hmm. we started a community um a few months back. And the goal of that, bro, is, like I said, just to get them foundationally set up, um, help them build their credit, and then help them get their first $20,000, $25,000 in funding. So now they, they see it, it's real. Because the biggest thing is taking people from possible to probable. Like, they see it online all day. Yeah, I see all these these uh, credit people. They posting this stuff and all these putting up in the air telling you what banks, but I don't know if it's real. So for $49, okay, if it don't work, it don't work. Now they get in there and they can see, oh, shit, this shit really does work. Uh, I'm all in on this thing. Let me go level up so I can get more hands-on training, more masterminds and things like that. So for $50, you really be getting people like $20,000 in funding? Yeah, yeah. We got people in our, we got people in our $49 program that have gotten over $100,000 hundred thousand dollars of funding. Mm. The, the way we structure it is you get, and this is the difference. This is kind of, I guess, a coaching uh, advice for anybody. Your low ticket and your mid ticket and your high ticket is all essentially the same thing, just with more access. So my forty nine dollar program, they get all the resources. They just don't get me. You get all of our uh, funding lists. You get all the recordings. You get trainings. You get access to people on my team who do Q and A sessions. That's easy for you to be able to go out and run the play. It's the same information. Then we're like, okay, I'm ready to get to that next level. Then you come up, and now you mastermind with me live. Mm. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. Sheesh, that's tough, bro. Yo, how many people you think you um you get like real life changing money? So in the last, uh, we funded uh 24 million in the last 18 months. 
Yeah, 18 months. So we do the service still as well, right? Um, so some people come to me, they already got a 700 plus. They're like, bro, I just need some money. I don't really want to learn it. I get it, right? Sometimes if, if you kick in already, maybe you don't have time to learn it. So we still do the service. And then we have a program where we show people how to do it for themselves and do it for others. Between the two, it's been 24 million. That's fire. Yeah, one thing that stood out to me, I think I said it, was um, when you was doing a million dollar for GameSpot, like, you knew your... your you knew what you were talking about, but not not even that, because it seems like a lot of people that go there, it seems like they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You were giving new information. Oh, yeah, got gotcha. And it was dope because, like, I think you were saying, like, you had you wasn't doing it for too long. Yeah. Like, you was doing it for a year or so yeah. then, but you still had the information. Tell me a little bit about that. How much was you um, researching this credit space before you got into it, or even if you weren't researching it? that much how good was the guy that you paid that to told you it. yeah okay now that's a good question so the way i learned bro it was crazy that conference in atlanta it was a circle of ceos i went there and um i didn't even know what to expect i didn't go there for credit i just went there because i was tired of being broke i'm like i gotta figure something out i, just, I see mad black people look like they getting money i'm trying to see what's up so i went there how much was it if you don't mind me it was uh i paid um they had the vip i couldn't afford it so i did the uh 197 ticket okay and then me and my cousin split it Right. That's smart. Okay. So um, so we went down there and I was just like, yo, I just want to meet people. Like, I'm just taking IGs. So one of the dudes at the uh, subway line downstairs, my guy Mel, he uh he was down there, he was cool. I was like, what's going on, bro? What do you do? Cause that's what everyone seemed to be asking people. He was telling me, yeah, I do credit. I'm like, all right, bet, let's let's lock in. But I did that with probably like 50, 60 people. So I had reached out to a lot of the people after, and he was one of the ones that hit me back. Like, hey, what's going on, bro? Let's mastermind. I'm like, bet. So we hopping on Zoom, he's showing me. The stuff he's learning. I'm showing him. I was doing nightlife, so I was showing him how I was getting people in the club, essentially, as marketing. I was saying I was decent at marketing, right? So that's how we exchange value. But when I'm seeing, I'm like, he's telling me, like, yo, you could walk into the bank if your credit profile looks just like this, and you and they'll give you twenty five, fifty, a hundred, hundred fifty thousand. And at first, I'm like, nah, this, this, this don't sound, this don't sound right. So now I start kind of looking it up on my own. I'm like, yo, this. That's what I need to learn because most people where we from, the problem ain't like the strategy. The problem be, how do I get some bread to start what I want to start? Right, that's yeah. the biggest problem. So I was like, nah, that's that's what I need because I knew I needed more money to do the things that I wanted to do. So once he showed me it, bro, uh, I went out. Um, I got I got $167,000 in funding in 47 days because mm. my credit wasn't bad. I just had to build it. So, you know, building it is real easy. You can go add some credit builder accounts, let them age for a few months, and then you could go get the bag from credit unions, uh, tier one type banks. And then from there, bro, um, people were asking me, how was I doing that? And you know, when we learn some new information, we want to bring it back to the neighborhood. Yeah. So I was just showing people around the way. Um, people was like, can you get me some funding? I'm like, yeah, let's try it. This is before I even had a funding company. I was just like, yeah, I got you. Um, but of course, there was a lot of naysayers. So as I just got real good, I started funding people, helping people build their credit, fix their credit. I'm like, I like this game. Mm. And then... Um, when you got the money, what did you do? My bad. Not that. When, I, when I first got the money, I'm getting to that. The first thing I did was after I got people some funny stuff, then I was like, oh, let me start this uh, tarot thing. So the first thing I did was tarot business. Okay. Right. So the I went car. out five cars. Okay. Yeah, I went okay. out, got five cars. I leveraged the credit. I got two auto loans from a uh, DCU, and then they also gave me a credit card. I went and got a cash car, Facebook Market, and then I bought um, and then I bought another like Honda. Okay. So I had like uh three cars at first. Then I got two more after I seen that the business was making sense. And then I started doing too much. This is where a lot of people mess up. I was like, all right, bet I'm the credit guy who diversifies his money. So then I went and got some Airbnbs in in Tulum. That shit was a bust. Then I got an Airbnb in Miami. That shit was a bust. I ended up losing a lot of bread. Mm. But in the process, I always say that sometimes you got to grow through what you go through. So for me, it was L's, but it was learning. So then I dial back. I say, all right, let me just focus on one or two things. I was on a tarot wave. And then um, I came across my guy, uh, uh, Runway. I had been following him for a while. From Philly. Yeah, yeah. That's my guy right there, man. And uh, I had tapped into his program, bro, where he now show you how to teach what you're doing. Cause I always liked teaching, even when I was dead broke, I was the dude trying to teach people stuff. And then yeah, I took off uh, after his program. Um, it was in August. I remember I made my first online sale, right? And then once I made that first sale, I'm like, yo, this shit is real. And then I started just helping more people. We were just doing low ticket products, master classes, twenty seven dollars, two day intensive, two ninety seven. I was doing that. We was running it up. I moved out of Boston uh, the next the next month, October like, October two years ago. All right, it's so many questions I got. Hold up, yeah. bro. I'm a I'm gonna shelf the uh the businesses because that's a great conversation. Yeah. <clears throat> this is just some random question. What separates the the students from the teachers? So like 
I've been like again, I've been interviewing like a lot of entrepreneurs, but I've it seemed like I interview all of y'all. I interview the Neos, yeah. the you know, so the CEOs, then I interview like their mentees, right? Mm -hmm. But like y'all all I don't want to say do the same thing, but essentially like it's the same thing. Yeah, that the coach yeah. is teaching the student to, to do do what he's doing. Absolutely. What separates the two? Uh just the person who makes a decision. Mm. It's just simply making a decision like who wants to who who says I want to go from just servicing to now serving the people. Mm. I want to make more impact. That's really the only difference between the people or teaching like, now. Like uh let's say like a you on a runway, mm -hmm. but like you took his course or whatever. Yeah. Like Essentially, again, to people that don't know no no know no better, if I'm listening to you, I'm like, shit, I want to go to the dude, the dude that teach teach him. Yeah, but like, what's the difference? Between, ah, I get you know what, what you're saying. saying. Like, okay, what's the difference? That's a good question. That's a great question, bro. Um, the difference is just this, and that's why I tell everybody, don't worry about saturation, because there's someone who will look at uh runway and they'll say. I relate to bro. I like how he's talking. He okay. got a family. Uh, he, you know, a little older, a little wiser. Then there's someone who might be like, oh, I like Darius's style. I like the way he talk, whatever it may be. So the difference is never, it's, it's literally in the person. That's why I tell people the best way to be is their authentic self. Mm -hmm. Like there's someone who see you, bro. I see you running on a grand every day. This dude's just like, yo, I know that his mind's right because he run every day. And I know I don't want to get my ass out of bed and run every day. So I need to be around him, not even for his, just his podcast shit, but because of what he represents. Mm. And then someone who might look at David Shane's like, oh, he, he seem a little older. He maybe even doing whatever. Yeah. But the difference is they're going to rock with who's relatable. I like that. Yeah. All right, going back to the business real quick. Um, that's that's interesting that you said you, 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 you did all these businesses. Some of them failed. Did you keep one of them? Did you keep the Toro? I kept the tarot for a little while. I just actually got fully out of the tarot uh, probably like six, six months, four, five, six months ago. Damn. So when you said it was failing, like, how was you not doing the, the right The tarot research? wasn't failing. The Airbnb Yeah, yeah the failed. Airbnb. Yeah. And it was on me. It, rushing it. Just rushing. Not doing the real research. Just saying... And, and we do this as entrepreneurs because we see we look at other people. Oh, I want to be the dude that diversifies my money everywhere. So let me go get some Airbnbs now because I feel like it'll look cool. Now that wasn't it. I didn't do the right research because you got to see what um, areas are actually going to be profitable. I just trusted somebody who told me, yo, it's near Miami. And because it was near Miami, it wasn't Miami. It was a little Havana, which is like 27 minutes out the way. Mm. It wasn't profiting. And Tulum, I got into it because you hear Tulum here in BB. I'm like, it's lit. But it, you know, I don't want to say too much about the dude who was running it, but it didn't end up going um, as planned. That's all I'll say. So, damn, yeah. yo, I was um, my my friend, he's been um, he just said something that was super interesting. I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. He was getting business funding like two years ago. Okay, but he never spent none of his money, right? And I'm like, bro, you got it. Why don't you spend it, right? Yeah. But he never spent none of the money. And I think he would like always go back and uh like get an increase in the credit. Okay. I didn't I first of all I didn't know they would give you an increase if you don't spend the money. Mm -hmm. But clearly they would you, give them Usually they don't. Usually you gotta spend something, pay it back, and yeah. now you're building like receipts. Yeah. So but now, right, he got like probably like a hundred, probably I don't know, a couple dollars yeah. on business, right? And he just bought his first uh development property, like um right. investment property. And he's gonna use all his business money funding to oh. like going to the investment. And one thing he said that I thought was really dope was he was like, man, it's crazy because like you would have thought I was holding on to all this money mm -hmm. when I really was like, I was really saving mm -hmm. technically, right? Like yeah, yeah. I I didn't look at it. He was like, he ain't look at it like that because yeah. like it's just business money that you holding on to. Like he ain't know when he was going to use it. Facts. But the fact that he had it so long is in good standing he, and he kept uh like getting more and more. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really waiting. He was really saving yeah. and, and making his money like double. Compound. Yeah, compound. Yeah, you yeah. get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, do you suggest that? Or like, is it a better way or a quicker way or fast? So the, that's a, it's a, the thing about that is, right, on these business credit cards, usually is a 0% interest, uh, interest period. So when you okay. get the funding, let's say you go to Chase, Chase Inc. Unlimited, you got 12 months, 0% interest. After that 12 months, the interest is going up 15, 20%. Okay. So what I would tell you is to have a plan for the money so you can put it to use. Let's say his development was, I don't know, took the whole 100000 Cool. Now he can put it down, start getting it right, start making some money from it, and now he got a cash flow in business. So when the interest goes up, now he can be able to start paying them back. Mm, right? So, that makes sense. Yeah, so usually faster. Better. So you want to, yeah, faster so you don't have to pay that interest. But, I mean, at the end of the day, even that interest, like, I don't know, hypothetically, if you get a, if you get a, a crib. Yeah. The interest you're paying 
on a loan is kind of like essentially would be your yeah hell yeah oh interest yeah, your rent or than, whatever yeah, but yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. And, and, and like you said you're using the money to make money so even if there's interest it ain't it ain't a bad play right. just the best case scenario yeah, would be zero but yeah hell yeah, yeah. I'm a, if I got funding I'm gonna use it nah that's yeah. fire yeah. shit that's dope yo I wanna talk to you about this investment shit man mm -hmm. I, um, it's crazy because I think we all we always have like time mm -hmm. but you gotta like learn something right like Absolutely. I mean I feel like I don't know I feel like the time is like the best the best thing to have. Like for money sure. for sure. But if you got the money, you need your time. For sure. And I was saying that because like when I had I had a couple of dollars I invested in something. But like you said, like I was just listening to my man because mm -hmm. I trusted him. Yeah. Man, I spent like thirty thousand dollars, bro. I still ain't see nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I ain't getting no millions of dollars. Like, nigga, that shit hurt. I'm like, Fact. shit, bro. Fact. Was the was the uh Airbnb the only thing that you kind of like invested in and, and took it on? Yeah, so I would say the biggest L was the Airbnb. After that, bro, transparently, I've only, outside of the car game, um, and that I only spent my money on coaching. Like, I, mm. I, I'll probably be like close to 200000 in coaching. Damn. Because every time I spend on it, I learn some new shit that make me more money. So I, I take it like I'll be a fool to not continue doing it. Now I'm kind of like, I got all the plays. Like, I know all the plays. It's just about me executing at a higher level at this point. But yeah, bro, like, I would tell a person... No, I'm not telling a person just go spend all your money on coaching. But what I am saying is if you're in a position where you don't got no bread, the only way that you're going to make some more money is by learning some new stuff. That's it. Mm. Um, so, you know, you got to take that risk with somebody who has proven receipts. That's the biggest thing. Mm. People be talking about, oh, this person didn't live it. Well, you should. You went off the hype versus asking for receipts. Every coach I ever paid, I vetted them for a little bit of time. Like, mm. I know, oh, they helped this person. Just Let me reach out to that person separately and see. So um, that was it, bro. That's what I've but been. But you still got to put the work in, though. Which oh, is that's the part. put more time in. Facts. You're not lying. At first, though, then you have the like right now. We got um, I got a a team of eleven people. I got an operations manager because what I was doing was I was doing everything. And, mm -hmm. and like you said, the point of business is to build something that can make you money without always having to be there twenty four seven. Otherwise, you might as well just have a job. Mm -hmm. But as you grow, we hired uh first couple hires we had with some VAs. They're going to take away from all the little tedious stuff. I hate checking emails and, and checking in with customers and doing one-on-one -on -one on onboarding calls myself. So we hired them, and then we get someone to oversee them. So now my business literally consists of me doing the marketing, me staying up to date with the latest game, and me showing up in uh, coaching. Because even on our service side, now I hired a team who can do our applications from us and duplicate what I was doing before I hired them. Damn. So you always got to do it first because now you can put in place processes. If, if, if you just start off, everyone will be like, yeah, I want to get passive income. How you going to get passive income, bro? You ain't even got uh, active income yet. Hmm. You don't even know what to do to be able to make it passive yet. So I'll say first be in the business and then work on the business. Damn. You spent 200000 on just like self-development. Yep. Coaching, programs, self-development, all that. Yo, who was the, well, like, yeah, now nah, who was the person that you paid the most for? The most I paid for was, um, it was a... The most I paid for was a selling from a uh, stage or selling from like virtual events. I paid my guy. It was it was fifteen k for a two day, fifteen k for a two day. Um, but you got access to like Voxer, you know, like Voxer, the walkie talkie joint. I heard of that. Yeah, it's like basically where you could communicate with them after the two days for like a year. But um, essentially, what it did was it showed us how to. Um, sell from like live presentations or, or Zoom presentations, webinars, challenges, things like that, right? Because there's a formula. Like I think people think like you just get on there and you just give some game and then say, who want to buy my stuff? No, it's a framework, getting people to believe in themselves, giving away a certain amount of value, um, transitioning into an actual point where you're going to sell. There's a way you even pitch the offer. So I spent uh, 15K on that for a two-day. I spent 15K on... Um, on another on another uh, program that shows you how to um, basically sell higher price products, right? Because that's something we that's something that most people are scared of. Most people they don't even know that they could be charging five, ten, or fifteen thousand because they never tried it. We just assume because based on how we think that ain't nobody gonna buy this. Mm -hmm. the first, I remember, bro, the first time I sold a, a, a thirty thousand dollar offer, that my coach had told me make the offer. In the whole week, I was I was kind of bitching. I'm like. Now that's too much. I think twenty k is good. He's like, do it at thirty thousand. Pitch the offer at thirty thousand. Three people took it. My mind was holding me back because I didn't understand that there's people out there who could actually pay thirty thousand. I'm used to around the way. When I first started, credit repair nine nine seven. Funding is nothing up front. You just pay me ten percent on the back end. Mm. But once you develop a belief and you understand that, most people 
um, buy like how they sell, you understand that you can actually sell anything if the value is there. Mm, how do you get the clients though? Like, where do you get the clients from? So we drive traffic. Uh, Instagram is where most of our marketing is at. Um, at a thirty thousand uh, dollar buy, like somebody's going to look find that on Instagram. So what they're going to do? It's a, it's a, it's. A, so I call it uh, conversation equals more conversion, right? So when I get someone from Instagram, what I do is I invite them to a free class. The free class, what happens is I get to show them who I am, tell them a little bit about me, give them some value. Then I might invite them to a multi-day class. So like right now, um, at the end of the month, we're going to be doing a five-day challenge. So now they, they spend the free time. They're like, all right, bro, sound cool. Now I get, allow them to spend five more days with me for $197, $497, or $997, mm -hmm. depending on which package. Now when I get to spend five to six days with somebody, they really get to see not just who I am and what I'm talking about, but I get to I get to instill a belief in them because most people the reason the reason they're not where they are isn't because of the information they don't know. That's what they that's what they tell themselves. And some of it is it's because they ain't never shifted their mind to believe that they can actually do shit. So when I spend five days with somebody, we shift their beliefs, right? Like we spend mornings with them, then we come back in the evening, we give them some actual game, not not just fluff. You gotta give them real game, and then we allow them to do Q and A. We do that for five days in a row. Now you. have now what you've done is, let's say there's 100 people on a five-day event. If, let's say, only 10 people are willing to spend $30,000 to get to their better life, now that's how you do a $300,000 day. That's how you see people doing these big days. Mm -hmm. But you have to spend more time with these people, and you have to actually show receipts. We, we got a framework, live testimonies from people who are really getting results. And then what it does is it makes it easier because now they have confidence that they can go out and accomplish the same thing. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yo, how much money do you think... Um no, I don't want to get too personal, but like, how much money do you think the average entrepreneur in your space is actually like bringing home? Like, bringing home. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of this stuff take money to promote. A yeah. lot of this stuff take money to go into the business, whereas though you ain't really seeing no money. But I'm just curious, like, how much? How much is? Because I'm, I, I don't believe nothing. But yeah, like, how yeah. much is niggas bringing home? No, that's a great question. So. You're right. There is a lot of there. When I first got into this, I was seeing people, people would be showing their stripes and stuff. And, you know, I might say a mil, two mil, five mil. And then when you get into the business, you realize you're putting money into advertising and stuff. So transparently, our business, we actually have great profit margins. So like, for example, in my business, every time I spend one dollar, we make six. Mm. Right. We we keep uh, my operation manager, Susie, I just told you about it. She keeps track of all our numbers every week on Monday. We see what we spent this week, what we made. So our profit margin is about 65, 70 percent, which right. is considered pretty high. Yeah. Uh, coaching space, some people get up to us 80. So like, for example, we'll, if we spend ten thousand dollars, right, um, promoting a webinar or challenge, whatever it may be, my expectation is that we'll do 60,000, whether it comes right away or in the back end. Let's say, for example, I say. Uh, okay, it's it's uh nine ninety seven, and let's say twenty people buy it, right? But then what happens is from the twenty people who buy, we know that some of them might upgrade to the next program, right? But as long as you know that, you, that's why it's important to have systems. Most entrepreneurs they don't got no systems; they just like I'm selling this, and whoever buys buys. But when you understand your processes and your systems, it become easy. So we take home a good amount, bro. Like last last year, uh, we grossed like one point. Uh, two five in the last twelve months, and our our take home was good. We took home about a little a little over a, a doctor salary, so mm. we kept like you know five and some change transparently. Um, and it's about keep living within your means because what could happen is, like I I want to go get the Lambo now, but I understand that there are certain numbers that I said I wanted to do before going to get that. So it's about being disciplined enough to say. Nah, you got to do that because what happened is a lot of entrepreneurs, they'll live above their means and they'll be bringing in a lot, but you're not keeping a lot. Mm. And that's something you learn too. You learn along the way. Yo, give me some game. All right. Yep. I think y'all had, you did a podcast and y'all were talking about Rebecca. She was, uh, she worked out or whatever. <laughs> yeah. She's a, uh, um, like a personal trainer or something, yep. right? Y'all did the whole breakdown. I want to do something different, mm -hmm. something similar. How do you know when it's time to start coaching, right? And then... What systems need to be in place first? Okay, fire. So you are ready to start coaching when you can help someone. 
Simple mm-hmm. as that. If you're at a level three and you want to help the twos and the ones, you can start. If you're at a level eight, you can help everybody because the sooner you start, the sooner you grow. The best business to get better at what you do is coaching because, bro, the reason when I was on the million dollars worth of game or even today, the reason I was able to answer the, all the questions or talk to him, give him all the sauce is because I get the same questions every single day. Mm-hmm. If you start a, a podcast mastermind, you're going to get the same 20 questions to the point where you're going to get bored with them, but you're going to know it like the back of your hand. So that's the best time to start. All right. The next part of your question was uh, what systems do you need? Yeah, like right now. Okay. Like right then and there. You need school. So go to school.com because that's going to be the platform for everything. You can host, you can have all your Zoom calls uh, set up in school on the calendar. Um, you could have your resources, like if you got ebooks or recordings, they all go in there. And it has automation set up so that you can remind people when all the classes are or all the coaching sessions are. And then what you could do is it's a great place for people to be able to network. Because now we can set up categories where it's like student wins or like Q&A. So literally school platform bangs out. It, it takes away all these other apps that you needed before. The second thing I would say you need is just a Zoom account. I think it's $9.99 a month. And then the third thing you want is uh, a CRM. So like Go High, you ever heard of Go High Level? Mm-hmm. So basically Go High Level is going to allow text automations, email automations, and then uh, workflow. So like if someone buys... Um, essentially, it'll be able to get them what they need, like get them on board and send them a course. That way you don't got to worry about manually having to call them or make sure they got their stuff. Mm. If you got those three platforms, you good. You could go run it up. All right, hold up, bro. Yeah. I, again, I'm, I'm somebody that make excuses, right? I yeah. get, everybody's like, yo, Jay, you need to start coaching this you podcast do, stuff, bro. Everybody asks you these questions. You help too many people. Yep. I feel like I don't have a clientele. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to go to ChatGBT right now. You're going to say, uh, give me a list of the 10 most common questions people have when it comes to starting a podcast, it's going to literally, based on research, give you all the questions that everybody want to know. So it's like, you ever been to church on Sunday and you like, dang, I feel like the pastor talking to me. Mm-hmm. It's because he already know all the common things everybody going. He knows some of y'all was out last night. He knows somebody was sitting this week, whatever. You're going to be that person now for the people in your industry. So it's called value content. The person who put out the most value content typically going to win. If you're oh. giving away the most game, you're going to win. That's how you get your That's how you get your Because now they trust you. Hey, here's where I go get my microphones for less than $2,000, right? Well, here's how I, I took my podcast from, you know, uh, getting no views to now 10,000 views on a video. Here's the strategy, right? Well, here's the, the top cameras that I use to be able to go set up my podcast. Now all you did was you alleviated all the doubt that I have about starting this podcast. So when I'm ready to go all in and pay, I'm coming to you. Bro, that's crazy. You know, it's funny that... Like, I've gotten people told me, like, I need to coach a lot, but I've never gotten that. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean when I was like, it was dope watching you on me and I was for a game because you was able to break things down in a just a digestible way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Paul was like, it was just a way that made sense. And, and I'm like, damn. Yeah. I never, I might try that, bro. But you know what I think we get in? We, we, uh, we, uh, go wrong at, not go wrong at, but like get in our way. Mm-hmm. People that's successful, mm-hmm. I feel like, being scared to start something new and failing. Facts. As crazy as that sounds, because like we're so like you, you would meet yeah. somebody that's so successful, so yeah. confident, yeah. but he won't try nothing new because he want to stay with, with this. He want to keep doing what he's doing. That's a fact. It's comfort. Mm. They, they, they say that the thing that keeps people from a million dollars the most is being stuck at five hundred. Going back to what I said earlier, it's like it's easy to get comfortable if you coming from the neighborhood and you doing three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a month a year because. Niggas wasn't doing that. Yeah. So you like, man, I'm cool and this is working. So when I tell you, in order to get to the next level, it's going to take us to unlearn and relearn some stuff. You like, eh. Because yeah. that might take now a month or two of not yeah. doing what you're accustomed to doing. But that's the other side. of That's your next level. And most people just don't get there because they stuck. And that being stuck stuff, it's like, it's like uh, it'll hold you back. So what about this then? Mm-hmm. Again, more excuses, but let me just peep. Mm-hmm. So I'm still trying to get things in order for my podcast. Yeah. Right? I'm, it's things that I'm just trying to, like the scheduling down pack, just just the, just the basic fundamentals yep. that I feel like I'm still working on. So I don't even want to start nothing else until I do that. Nah, you start now because there's someone who needs to get where Jay Hill's at now. They're, but I'm saying for me, like, I don't know, just my, just my, my back end stuff. Oh, like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to make sure, like, I don't know, for example, that my two episodes drop every week at a certain time. Every week for not for three months straight. You get what I'm trying to okay, say? Like, I, I get what like you're I, saying. It's little things I be forgetting. It's like, man, gotcha. I know I'm not even, I'm barely up on game with this. So to add another thing another to my plate, okay. it's like, man. That's a great, no, that's great. Then what you should do is you should master that before getting to this. Because like you said, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. So you're right. Get your service base or your main thing up and going to the point where you know that 
not as hands off, but you know that you have a, S, uh, a SOP, we call it just a standard operation procedure, mm -hmm. where even if you needed someone else to be able to do the things, you could be like, all right, bet I'm shooting the podcast. Maybe you send it to an editor or whatever, and then they know your whole process. So every week, you get two episodes dropping at the same time. Then at that point, you like, oh, I got a little downtime. I'm feeling good. It's been three months straight. Our two episodes drop. Now I feel like I can take on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to my homie. Um, He do credit too. Mm hmm and he was like, where, where we go wrong at when it comes to this um, funding thing mm -hmm. is like kind of what you said. We try to like invest in things that that got nothing to do with what we like, what mm -hmm. we passionate about. Yep. And that's how we like fail, right? And he was like, man, instead of like me putting a 30000 in whatever I put it in, I should have put it in a podcast because that's what I do every single day. Real talk. And I'm like, For real. But I'm like, I guess me, you know what's funny? And it's going to sound crazy. As, as 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 successful as I am with this podcast, mm -hmm. that's a that's a uh, that's a sense of like um like being scared. I don't know the exact word, but like um not believing in your Bully. business. Yeah, because yeah. it's like you put a you put thirty thousand as something else when you got a business to put thirty thousand. Like how much do you really how much faith do you really got <laughs> in your facts. podcast? Because why wouldn't you put it in? This? No facts. But it's like damn. it'd be like that, bro. It, and it's like if you put it into that, like. Even like, do you do do you do other people's podcasts? Like, have yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that brings a lot of traffic to you. Mm -hmm. That's the, so. What would you, if you had thirty thousand to put into this? What specific things would it go into? Like, what are some things it could go into? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, damn, bro, I don't even. I, I probably I now know what I know now. Mm -hmm. I probably would uh try to get one or two guests. Okay. Um, that's something that I didn't that I I never thought I would do. Fire. Like paying for guests, but I definitely I'm. I would do that now. Dope. Uh, probably uh, marketing. Okay. Like, yeah, definitely That's marketing. Word. That's all I can think about. And probably... How often do you put out clips? Clips? Yeah. Not as much as I, I need to. I definitely probably invest in like... Uh, uh, How many uh, right now a week? So then that should, that's your next bad. level. Yeah, so when yeah. I... So uh, transparent, we talk transparently, yeah. right? When I had my job, I had like a six figure job, whatever. Mm -hmm. I paid somebody to do clips. Okay. And we was doing, bro, I, I was getting like 60 clips a month. Fire. Yeah, like that, that was my was standard. Easy, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. But uh, yeah, when I couldn't pay him no more, I kind of slowed down. You yep. know what I'm trying to say? I, I would definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause that shit work. That shit, that's it, yeah, right? That shit that yeah, shit the big pause. Um, are you you heard of uh, Opus.pro? Yeah, I don't like them. Uh, you don't like their clips? Not, not, not saying I, don't, I just don't like none of the AI clips for some got reason. You, like, got like you. Opus, there's a, there's, a, there's a few of them. Opus got one. Yeah, I think Opus probably one of the better ones though. Yeah, I, I've tested them all too. Opus probably my favorite, but sometimes it don't hit like when you got the editor, yeah. editor the person. But also, I feel like with people like you, like with Opus clips, and like this is just us popping shit. Mm -hmm. I feel like the shorter form content. Opus will hit better. Yes. But like my content be hours. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like it don't really give me that. It sauce. might not be the everything in like the one. Yeah. Because it's a long form. You get what I'm saying? Like but if you're saying. doing like some 10 minute videos, you can get Opus, you'll get right. Break that shit yeah, down. You'll get right. You yeah. get right. But like an hour podcast I put in an Opus clip, it just be like. It don't be the hitting like how you want. It makes probably, sense. Yeah, they probably give me the, the like they'll give me the uh, little things that I hate. They'll give me the opening um, part of the interview. I'm like, bro, like, what? Like, Why would you even make that a clip? Right? Yeah, I know. I, I don't know. need. <laughs> nah, I'd be like that sometimes. You're not lying. You're yeah, not lying. bro. So like, no. man, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. So you don't feel like there's no challenges right now. Like, it's it's, it's nothing that's that's in my business. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, challenges for us, like you said, it's literally the same thing. Like putting more money. Um, like transparently, like these podcasts. Like mm. I love to tell the people just transparently. Like these podcasts, they cost, but. They help you grow. Like mm -hmm. I look at some of my peers, um, and they cooking in the game, and the people who are making more than me are spending more than me. So my next level is on the other side of now spending more, right? Like when I went on a podcast run last year, bro, I dropped over, I dropped damn near a hundred k in like thirty days. Damn, yeah, different pods, bro. Uh, and but the return is infinite. A year later. I'll be out. Yo, you was on me. You was on this. Yeah. And on our um, application, when people come to apply for our program, we just say, uh, how did you find that? So it was Instagram. And then we have a few Marvin Francois podcast. Was it uh, Millionaire Mindset, uh, Gillian Wallow? And they always let us know. And the podcast is still one of the ways that people found us. So I know that there's always a return. Even if it's not like right away, it's evergreen. Because mm. y'all on YouTube. You got you got um enough time to like do your own podcast? That's what I'm thinking, bro. I was just talking to... uh. And my guy T, he work at that Rich and Fit gym, but they do like production or whatever. Yeah. I was gonna ask him like how to like set up 
like something like this? Should I hire someone? Or well, you know they got those studios where you could just go. So um, I'm thinking I want to start my own podcast, bro, in 2025. Yeah, like even if it's not like interviewing people, mm-hmm. like just I learned this from David Shane. I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. Cause at first I was like, man, everybody don't need a podcast. Mm-hmm. And he broke it down effortlessly. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Even if you don't get millions of views, mm-hmm. if you can build a small community, 10 people, like, you know what I'm saying? That's something. Facts. And on top of that, I think anybody that's a professional or something need to talk about it. Facts. Because then you you sharpen your game, you yeah. learn more. And then like we the best consumption, like just being honest, as a consumer. The best things I, I like to watch is people that know what they're talking about. It's you anything. Know, you know, yeah, anything. Yeah. So it's like, bro, I feel like with me, it gets hard because like I came into the game as a podcaster. Yeah. Right? Now, if I did a podcast on being a podcaster, that probably would be mm. fire. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I ain't that never think. Crazy. You know, I'm just saying. So yeah. like now I'm thinking like, yo, niggas that be having businesses need to have podcasts. Facts. For, even your, if, for, your, for your expertise. Yeah. Even if it's just for... Just for the sake of it, bro. Like, yeah. yo, just if, if if it's for Q and A, mm-hmm. let's just put it on a on a the lower level. Yeah. Like, even if it's just for Q and A, people you don't have to ask people answer people Shit. questions. They got a question, yo, check out this check episode. Out this video, boom, Facts. it's gonna give you everything you need to know. Now, that's so good. Yeah, you got. Me. Yeah, I'm making a decision right now, live on the J Hill podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We starting the podcast 2025. Right, that'll be fire, bro. Yeah. And I, I mean, if you need, I hope you. But I know T uh, Torrent is it uh, Tosin. Right? Yeah, but I'm gonna come, come see you. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. saying, we all, it's all yeah, family. It's yeah. all family. Whatever, whatever you need help with. Now, my guys, they be busy, man. I'll be like, yo, T, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> nah, they be getting to it, yeah, though. They, they be do. getting to it. They do. Damn, bro, that's so fire, man. How's yeah. everything else outside of the business, though? It's been good, man. Can't complain, bro. Um, we're going to travel. I like to travel. Uh, we're going to, um, my birthday coming up in November. Mm. Uh, I'm actually doing a challenge. Make sure y'all tap in. And then, um, yeah, December, I'm going to go to Dubai. And I'm going to visit my team in the Philippines. That's hard. Yeah, that's fire. Yeah. Um, Isn't it crazy how much all of that like lifestyle stuff is still marketing? Crazy, right? I know. Every <laughs> time I go to town, I'm like, damn, the views is on a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do is travel somewhere. But yeah, I say like with lifestyle co- content, everyone think it gotta be Lambos and, and yachts. It don't gotta be that. It could just be you doing what you do in your everyday life. Mm. You know what I mean? You were saying you was thinking about moving, bro. Um, how was like again, I know the money is coming in, but mm. how is it still being responsible though? You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy to, I don't want to say floors, I mean like splurge, because I don't want to say, you ain't really splurging, but like you can get caught up in the lifestyle. Absolutely. You feel me? Like, 100%. You're going to learn. I tell you, life is the yeah. best teacher. Uh, she was spending my first year out here, bro. I was outside. Like, was, that was the first time <laughs> I get money. I was outside. Yeah. Um, the past, uh, I would say 2024, I've been um just more responsible, mm. making better decisions, realize that like as quick as the money can come, the, the money I, can go. Did you have, and just being honest, yeah. Um, was you being re- more responsible because you had to? I was being more responsible because I realized I was making a lot but not keeping as much. Mm. So yeah. it, you never got into the position where you had to, like you, like you was forced to be more responsible. N- no, just saying, how the hell do I make this number and at the end of the year only have this number yeah. left? Something ain't, yeah, yeah. something ain't right. And yeah. if I'm educating people on how to do this, I gotta be a man of my word, otherwise. Mm. You feel like you're not being nah, transparent. Facts. Yeah. yeah. You, you got you got a family? Nah, I don't. Oh, it's just good. me. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. You lucky. Yeah. <laughs> shit. You keep a little more of it. Nigga, what? You, you said shit. <laughs> you lucky as hell. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I'm curious. I think I was curious to know this. Why you ain't invest in club shit? Cause uh the average club shelf life, bro, it's shit like three years, especially in like Atlanta. Like clubs don't stay around a lot. No, not a club, but like um, Maybe uh, booking guests, booking talent for cl- like just club promote. Oh, something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, like why you ain't do that? that? That's that's a good question. Honestly, like the club, bro, I did a, I was in the night like five years and it was cool, great business, but I ain't really want to stay involved. Like even now people be like, yo, would you ever invest in the club? I'm going to be honest. I don't think I would do it unless I was completely hands off. Okay. Because once you, bro, I was out, uh, let, let me bring it up. I had a Thursday night in the city, a Friday night, a Saturday night, and then long weekend Sundays. Oh, so I was in the club four nights a week yeah. for for five years. Sheesh. You feel me? So right now, people like out here, oh, let's go to the club. Like even my boys, let's, we outside. I'm like, nah, yeah. I do like some cool old lounge, lounge shit, yeah, some yeah, R&B, yeah, some yeah, junk. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not I'm not in no club. I'm good. Wait, so wait, was you, you, you had your own parties? Like you was the main promoter? I was the main promoter. Yeah. So I did, um, I always tell people like, just how I did this is how I did that. Like the first year when I quit my job, the bank, you know, I was fresh out of school, whatever. 
I'm like, damn, my mom's about to roast me, bro. I'm like 22. You know, I just graduated college or whatever. But I could, I realized the job's not for me just because I can't sit somewhere for nine hours straight. So when I left, I had to figure it out. And I knew this girl, she was working downtown at the clubs. And I'm like, how did this thing work? Like, do you make money? And she was, she was real. She was like, well, I don't really make that much money, but I get in and I get free drinks. I'm like, all right, is there money to be made? She said, yeah, that's the dude to talk to. So I met this dude, um, my guy Roy. He was running at nights. Um, and then what happens, I'm like, yo, I need to make some money. I like this. Let me say, what's up? So the next day we met for lunch. I went out. I seen bro's crib. I seen his family. I seen how he living. I'm like, I'm like, you do something else or just not? He's like, nah, just the, yeah. just the club. It's a lot of money. You talking about return on your investment? <laughs> that business is great. You go in with nothing. <laughs> Crazy. I was just passing out flyers, <laughs> Facebook messaging people come out. People start saying, oh, you, you, you just spamming, whatever. But eventually, bro, like everything, if you stay in the game long enough, and then I got my own night like nine months later. Bro, my first night, we sold out before even midnight. And uh, yeah, that business was, it was lit at times. Yeah, I was thinking like, man, because when, when you was coming up to me, like, man, shit, why you ain't? Investing like now, booking talent. Yeah, we put the bread up because, they, bro. The, I know the return is ridiculous. It is, bro. And I know because we bought people out. Like we bought a, uh, um, what's her name? Ju uh, what's Cam Cameron's old girl? Uh, Cameron's girl. We brought um, we brought the Claremont twins out in Atlanta. We brought uh the dude from um Nick Cannon's show out. Conceded. Conceded. I okay. brought Capri Hernandez from New York out. Uh, we brought a lot of guests out. So the return is definitely there. Man, you should bro, you should think about that, bro. Even if, if you if, even if you don't like go go because you don't have to go into you could be a solid. You could investor just be that. yeah, you can. That'd be fire. That would be. What's up? Right. Let's talk about it. Okay. That'd be fire. Let fire. Me know. Now I used to do uh, clubs in Baltimore. Okay, so, like, I used to host a lot, and then I got into uh, having my own events. Dope. Yeah, yeah. So like, fire. yeah, that. But then I moved. I, I moved during my peak. That was crazy. That's how it be. That's how it be because you gotta make a decision. Like, do I want to keep doing this? Damn, it's bro. a good business though. So, what you got coming up next, man? Um, so at the end of this month, I'm gonna be doing a uh, five day challenge where I'm gonna be showing people how to uh, essentially turn credit into cash. We're gonna show you how to get access to the funding, we build your credit, get access to the funding, and then what to do with the money. Because a lot of people they teach how to get the funding, but you know, my thing is like over delivery. So we're gonna show you once you get this money some ways that you can start making money, so you can get to a point where you make your first ten thousand all the way up to us getting a six figures a month. So. Mm. Well, that's hard, man. It's, it, did we miss anything? Uh, now, make sure y'all um, shoot me a message on Instagram at Darius Benders. Just DM me the word impact, and I'm going to send y'all free invites or something. Nah, this is fire, bro. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Like I said, man, whatever you need help with, man, I'm here, bro. Like, Definitely. You know what I'm saying? We already tapped in. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. This is good, man. Oh, Darius God. Benders, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is wrap. We out. Yes, sir.